Uh, to pronounce my name correctly, it's Oyo Shebeye. It doesn't really matter. I got used to it a lot. Uh, so uh, I've been having that name trouble for 46 years. Even my grandmother couldn't write my name correctly. So that's absolutely fine for me. Um, as we are laughing anyway, uh, do you know this joke about a man who walked into a bank with a bill of lading? Uh, it's probably not a very well-known joke. Um, and it gets bad after this, actually. Uh, what happened was that this man used the bill of lading as collateral for a financial transaction worth 750 million US dollar. It was international trade uh, for copper, copper trade. Thanks. Um, international trade for copper. Uh, the guy did not buy small quantity, he bought a bulk carrier of copper. And he went to a bank and he said, well, I have the, the bill of lading, I'm the owner. Because that's what the bill of lading is, it's not only a shipping document, it's an ownership document. And the bank said, wow, that's a lot of copper and that's a lot of financing, but I'll gladly finance it for you because I have the document. And what that bank didn't know was that that guy went then after that to four other banks. And he told them exactly the same story. And that is why we want to use blockchain in international trade. Because this is, well, not a double spend, it's a five times spend. Uh, to give you an idea, the total value destroyed was five billion US. That's officially announced, people think it's more. Uh, and the funny part was that neither the copper nor the bulk carrier that was carrying the copper could ever be traced back, which is also, for me, kind of mind-boggling. So um, that is why we want to use blockchain within the supply chain. That's why we develop Deliver. Um, why else blockchain? Um, one of the reasons uh, why I started working in uh, started to embrace blockchain technology was the fact that if you look at supply chains, supply chains are by their nature decentralized. You cannot get on your own a container from China to the Netherlands. You need to work together. You need to work together with a lot of different parties. And within that collaboration, there's not one dominant member. It's a group of people, a group of organizations working together in order to get a container from A to B. And yes, there are some supply chains where there is a single dominant member, but when he goes beyond his first tier suppliers, he loses that level of control he has. So I would say that supply chains are by the definition decentralized. That's why we use blockchain. It's an IT architecture, and I know some people will now want to kill me because uh, calling blockchain an IT architecture is probably not the right wording, but it is what it is. It is decentralized, and it is actually the kind of structure we need in order to run supply chains. So we do that together, deliver with partners. Cross industry, we're not trying to automate a silo. We try to automate supply chains. And in this particular case, we're not only um, automating a supply chain, but we're automating a real trade lane between South Korea and the Netherlands. End-to-end -end visibility for uh, containers going from South Korea back to, uh, to the Netherlands. And we do that together with our partners. ABN AMRO, who takes care and has extreme knowledge of blockchain technology, but also on the financing side of international trade. Samsung, who not only is the shipper for who we ship the goods, and who's also the receiver on the other end in the Netherlands, but is also a company with a lot of talent when it comes to IT. It's, it's a very big IT development company. And last but not least, Port of Rotterdam. Port, by nature, are ne neutral parties within a supply chain. So if you combine that, you get 
I would say, a very good intersection of how a supply chain looks. And that is how we work together within Deliver. So everybody focusing on a particular part, collaboration between different industries and between different parties. Um, another reason why we use blockchain is that 50 years ago, somebody came up with a brilliant idea. It's called a metal container. And sometimes brilliant ideas are simple. They should be. The problem is that if we look at the information and financial flows that support the physical flow that we now have with the container, we use a bill of lading. Anybody knows how old that document is? Four or five hundred years, exactly. If we go to the financial flows, it gets even worse. Letter of credit, anybody can give me a exact date? Goes back to the Knights of the Temple, 11th or 12th century. The concept of letter of credit and bill of lading has not changed ever since. The result, machine to paper to machine processes. We have people spending eight hours a day just typing over things that are printed off a machine, of a printer, because they received an email with a PDF on it, and now they key it in. And they do that five days a week, 45 weeks a year. It must be able, it must be possible to do that much more efficiently. You want to have machine-to-machine -machine integration. That's why we use blockchain. We also use blockchain in order to coordinate the three different flows. Because right now, these three flows are totally disjointed. It takes 36 hours for a container to get from Singapore to Jakarta. It takes seven days for a container to get cleared. Just imagine what would happen if you could slice off two or three days by just automating the financial and information flows. What that would give international trade. What that would mean for capacity in international trade. It's mind-blowing. And what you need is a universal connector. Uh, this is one a travel connector. Basically, you need that. One connector that connects those three flows in an integrated way. That is what Deliver does, and that is why we use blockchain. Now, this slide is a little bit busy. Um, I didn't, it's a, again an architecture slide. Um, but we already talked about goods, funds, and data. And we added trust to that. That is why we want to use blockchain. We want to create a trusted supply chain. And why is that so important? Well, 15% of global trade is not taking place because parties don't trust each other. And because of the lack of trust, they don't get financed. And to give you an idea, 15% of international trade is 1.5 trillion US dollars. That's the market we're after with, US, uh, with, with Deliver. That's how you, if with a market like that, it should be pretty easy to make money on it as well. This is also the way we envision the world of international trade to look like. This is a hybrid world. Anybody who thinks that we're all going to be on one single blockchain or that everything is going to move to the blockchain, really, uh, I hope I'm not insulting anybody here, but I think that's a very bad idea because in a lot of cases it doesn't make sense. So use it where it does make sense. And that's why we think in Deliver in particular, we designed it as a notary service, as a way to ensure that we have, um, that we can uh, transfer assets and data in a reliable way while keeping the integrity of the data and assets intact. And by doing so, creating trust. So that is why we are using blockchain for the notary service. Um, we also have integrated in our pilot um, IoT devices. 
Why? Because they provide very valuable information about the, the, the conditions in which uh, items are being transported. So that's another technology we use. With those kind of technologies, if you have IoT devices, blockchain together, you can start adding this layer of trust to the supply chain. So what we are doing, what we have done so far is a real, is a first pilot. This pilot is, uh, uh, we did a number of shipments from Korea to the Netherlands, basically interconnecting two, two blockchain solutions. One in, in Korea, uh, which uh, uh, Samsung built for the Korean uh, customs, and one application that we designed here in the Netherlands, where we um, added a number of oracles to it. Oracles such as uh, Pronto, which is built by Port of Rotterdam, and provides uh, uh, reliable ETA information. Another oracle we added to it was sign proof of delivery. Not only sign on glass, but also a legally binding sign on delivery. Because it's actually conform it has the same legal rights as a paper document. So that way we were able to really reduce paperwork. Um, in May and October, we're now working on the second phase. Containers back from the Netherlands to Korea. A port in Australia is being added to it. Um, and we do, and we're in the middle of business validation. And next year, hopefully I'll be speaking here again and be talking about a separate entity called Deliver. I think I get the cue that I need to yeah, stop. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh, that, oh, that's what it was. Okay, thanks. No, um, I just, uh, if, if I have 30 seconds to uh, plug my book, that would also be nice. Um, I co-authored it together with uh, uh, two professors from the University of Southern California, Nick Vias and Bhaskar Krishnamachari. Uh, and it basically answers the questions, why, what, how, blockchain? Thank you. Thank you. We have a couple of questions, and we wanted to have some time for that. Um, the first one from me is, uh, how will this new blockchain document go from P proof of concept to scaling? How, how will that work? Um, well, we are gr gradually uh, building up the network. Yeah. So we're adding ports to it. Uh, we're adding shippers to it. Um, and it's, it's like how Uber started. I mean, it starts small, and then you grow and grow and grow. Five yeah. years? Ten years oh, in this industry, in this really slow. I mean, if you describe it, it's really amazing that it works. Yeah, no, I, I think that. But how long will it take to transfer to the next step? Will it take five years, ten years, or is it first two cities, or how how will it? Well, be? I think with the the capabilities we already have, um, we basically have the uh, all the ingredients there to automate a trade lane between the Netherlands and South Korea. Uh, I don't know the exact numbers of billions of dollars we can do there. But yeah. That is our first You first thing. take hop. You take an, uh, an, a point-to-point -point approach and then exactly. slowly you adapt the network. Exactly. Okay. Um, how is it connecting to financing is the question of Bart. I don't know why it doesn't show up. Uh, okay. Um, well, in, in the, there's a very general uh, uh, explanation for that. Um, banks, uh, if they, uh, or logistics is normally quite risky. Mm -hmm. um, if you order something in China, uh, the whole logistics process is a black box. Um, banks don't like black boxes. They want to have security. They want to know what's going on. If you can provide uh, information about uh, the, 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 the conditions under which uh, uh, the container has been moved, hmm. uh, information about certain track points, then banks uh, get a much better idea of the security they have. Yeah, uh, and, it get, and the payment goes uh, much quicker. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we need to read your book. And are you Thank available you. here to talk to other people who uh, basically uh, want to talk to you in more one-to-one? Uh, -one? Uh, no, I'm going on holidays. Uh, but luckily, um, I have uh, three uh, good-looking uh, guys over stand there. Stand up for a second. Can you please stand up? Stand yeah. up? Yeah, so you're from the harbor of Rotterdam yeah. also. Yeah. Two of them, uh, yeah. and Lars uh, from uh, Samsung. Uh, and they are more than willing to answer your questions. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we have even have our own. And booth. you have your own booth. Okay, yeah. so we think. Thank you very much You're for welcome. coming before your holiday. Good luck. Okay, appreciate it.